Uh, hi, so um, this video is just to kind of show you uh, how to get the equations um, using Kirchhoff's rules uh, to then solve for the different currents. So in this case, I1, I2, and I3. And um, since we have three unknowns, we need three equations. Uh, the easiest one to get is the one we get with the junction rule which uh, is just that the sum of the currents entering a junction um, is equal to the sum of the currents leaving it. So what that means for this um, circuit is that I3 here, whoops, uh, whoop, okay. Sorry, I don't know how to use computers. So I3 is equal to I1 plus I2. And then, so that's our first equation, which is easy enough to get. Um, for the next two equations, we need to use the loop rule, which says that the sum of the changes in potential around a closed loop is zero. And um, I want my loops to be this one and this one. So the first loop um, is we're gonna do this one. So. Boop. And I'm just going to look at uh, how the voltage changes as we go around the loop. So if I start from here, right, we know that the voltage here is going to be zero. Um, and as I move this way, uh, the first thing I encounter is this battery, which is going to add 45 volts. So you did that. Um, the next thing I encounter uh, as I go this way is this resistor. Um, and so this is gonna drop our voltage, right? Uh, and it drops it by IR. Um, in this case, I is I3. So it drops by one I3. So we did that one. Now we have another resistor. This one is um, has a resistance of 45 ohms. So I'm gonna subtract 47 I3. Okay. Um, now, so I'm continuing um, around on my loop, but now instead of um, using I3 as my current, now I'm using I1. And so uh, now I encounter this resistor, which is going to subtract, um, or which has a resistance resistance of 34 ohms. And so that's going to subtract 34 I1. And so, boop. And then after that, now I'm back where I started. So we know this is all going to equal zero. And if you just combine like terms and also um, move the 45 um, over to the other side, or actually move these over to the other side, but not important, um, you get 48 I3 plus. 34 I1 equals 45 volts. And again, that's negative 1 plus negative 47 is minus 48 I3. You just move it over here and then move in minus 34 I1 over here as well. So that's how you get your second equation. So that's one, that's two. Okay, and then, D. 
Do we want to do that? I don't know. You know what I mean. Okay. Uh, and then for my third um, equation, I'm going to do the loop rule again. But this time, I'm going to be using this loop down here. And so I'm going to start at that same point, but now I'm going in this direction. Oh yeah, I should put these just so you know why I'm um, adding, not subtracting these voltages. And then like with the resistors, that's like because of the direction of the current. But anyway, um, so this is going to be, we're going to go this way again. So we're going to have the same 45 volt, uh, 1I3, 47I3. So again, we can just get out the way and say 45V minus, uh, I'll, I'll write it out. Writing out is better. Because then when you donk up, you can go back and be like, oh, that's why I donked up. Not that I'm assuming I or you is going to donk up, but anyway, so this accounts for me traveling along this portion of the circuit or this loop. Um, and so as I'm going now, I'm going to come across another battery. So this is going to add minus the plus, this is going to add 85 volts. Oh. And then now, and now our current is um, I2. Uh, now I come across this resistor, so we're going to have and then now we're going to come over here and have another resistor. I'm not bothering to write those, never mind. Okay. And now we're back at the start here. So this all equals zero. And then again, when you combine like terms and move everything around the way you want to, I guess, um, you get 48. I3 plus 19 I2 equals 130 volts. So this is how we got our third equation. So when I end up solving for like I1, I2, and I3, it's easiest for me if I rewrite all my equations in the same kind of format. And that format is A I1 plus B I2 I3 equals D. Um, and I mean, that just means I want like the um, variables being like this order with their coefficients and that equals like whatever it equals, right? So that means my first equation is gonna become one I1 plus one I2 minus one I three equals zero. That's our first equation. And then our second one, it's just gonna be, sorry, this is just me rewriting it. So like you can skip ahead if this is not helpful to you, but 
anyway, yeah, we just want to put everything in this form. So we want we want to have all three of our variables in each one, and we want them to all be in this order. And I'll show you why in a second. Almost there. Okay. So normally now, right, we have our three equations. You can just use algebra to find out what I1, I2, and I3 are. But there's um, a way that I think is easier using matrices. And like, I know that probably sounds like it's harder, but it's not. It's the same thing. You just have it in a box instead of writing out 8,000 lines of algebra. So there's that. So in our matrix, we're going to have the coefficients of each of these variables and then whatever it's equal to, which is why I was like, we should put it all in this order, right? That just makes it easy for everyone. So like, for example, what's going to go in here is the A, B, C, and D. We're not going to include we're not going to write out I1, I2, I3. Like, we don't have to deal with that. So I'll put this is row one is from equation one. Row two is from equation two. And then row three is from equation three. Whoop, that was janky, but that's OK. And then we have, I'm just showing you, like, this is what each um, number in the matrix is going to mean. Okay. And then so where we have like our equal sign here, I'm going to put a dashed line. Pretend that looked nice. And then blah, blah, blah. And this is going to be D, like whatever voltage it's equal to. So our first equation, our coefficients are 1, I1, 1, I2, and negative 1, I3, and the sum of those equals zero. Uh, for the second one, we have 34, zero, and 48, and that equals 45. And then here we have zero, 19, 48. Okay, so this is our matrix. And so ultimately what we want to find, right, is like I1 equals blah, 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 right? We don't know what it is yet. And so basically with that, if you were to rewrite it in this form, right, what that is is I1 plus zero I2, or one I1. plus zero I three equals question mark, right? That's, and we want to find that for each of these. So at the end of like all this, right? Um, what we eventually want is a matrix that looks like this. Except, you know, prettier than this because we took the time to write it all nice instead of me um, or unlike me who's just lazy okay so this is what our matrix is going to look like at the end we're going to have i1 equals something i2 equals something and i3 equals something so when like you're solving these with matrices all you're really trying to do is get it in this form and I'm not gonna bother calling it the name it is because I don't wanna confuse people who haven't done matrices stuff before. But anyway, so I want it to look like this, right? 
So um, it's just like when you solve with algebra, you're allowed to like multiply rows by numbers and you're allowed to subtract and add rows. So what I mean by that is for example, like let's say um, for row two, right? So I want this number to be zero, right? Uh, and this number to be zero. So to start with, um, I could do like E2 minus uh, 34 E1, right? And so what I'm doing there is I'm multiplying this row by 34 and then I'm subtracting it from this row. And that's how I'm gonna get this number to be zero. So 34 minus 34 times one, right, is gonna be uh, zero. Zero minus 34 times one is gonna be negative 34. 48 minus, minus one times 34, so 48 plus 34 is gonna be 82. And 45 times zero, I mean, thir uh, 45 minus 34 times zero is just 45 again. So, yeah. And then nothing else changes. We're, we just do one row at a time. Or if your brain is big, you can do multiple rows at a time because you're smart and can do mental math, which I cannot. Okay. And also, um, I just want to point out that what we did here is just like if you wrote out, um, so this is row two, so this minus um, 34 times this. So you can imagine like doing that with algebra, it's, we're literally just doing the same thing except we're only writing the coefficients because it's prettier and easier to keep track of, I guess. But anyway, um, so now we have this, we got this to be a zero, but we also want, remember here, we also want this to be zero. So this time, um, and we want this to stay a zero, right? So if we look at row three, this is also a zero. So we could subtract um, uh, uh, 82 over, oops, I should write this down actually. So from the second row, we're gonna subtract 82 over 48 times E3. And we got that because, remember we want this to be a zero. So if we multiply 48 by 82 over 48, we're gonna get 82, 82 minus 82 is zero. So that's why we're multiplying by this. So again, row one stays the same. I'm just gonna write ones like this cause yeah. Row one's the same. And now row two, we have zero minus blah, blah, blah times zero, which is just zero. And then we have negative 34 minus this mess times 19, which if you do the math, it's about that, negative 66.5. Um, 82 minus 82, remember, um, is zero. And then 45, uh, minus this times 130 is negative 177. Approximately, the actual decimals are super ugly, but you know, rounding. So, okay. So now if you look, um, our row two, all we have to do to get it to look like this is divide by negative 66.5. So I'm gonna, erase this stuff so we have more room and yeah, so 
just a reminder, this is, we're going, we're going down. Okay. So now we're going to do row two, or equation two, divided by, boop, negative 60. Also, I'm sorry, I'm using a trackpad on a laptop, so everything is going to be really ugly and take a long time. But that's okay. Um, anyway, yeah, so we have the same stuff here. All right, so now row two is zero divided by negative blah, 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 which is zero. We have negative 66.5 divided by negative 66.5, which is one. Zero divided by blah, blah, blah is zero. And if you divide negative 177 by negative 66.5, you get that row two, which remember this is I2. This is telling us that I2 is equal to two point, whoop, pretend that looked good, okay. 2.6, actually, yeah, no, that's gonna bother me. Whoop, 2.66, right? So that's one um, down, and I know it seems like it's like really cumbersome right now, but like, this is just to kind of show how to do it, I guess, because sometimes it just is easier, you know? Especially once, like, now that I have this as a one, right? Like. Now I want to get my bottom row, remember, to be 0, 0, 1, blah, blah, blah. Since I already have this as a 1, right, I can just, so from row 3, I can subtract 19 times row 2, right? And then when I get this, And see, when you do this, you'll be doing it on paper, so it'll actually make a lot of sense to be doing it instead of on Zoom with a trackpad. Because, yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah. But anyway, so you have row three, you subtract 19 of row two, zero minus 19 times zero, zero, 19 minus 19 times one, is zero and 48 minus 19 times zero is 48. And then um, 130 minus 19 times uh, 2.66 is about 79.4. Right now, just like before, we divide E3. You can see there's kind of like a pattern here. Like, you know, when, once you do it a couple of times, it's, you know, it's not so crazy looking. I don't know. I feel like matrices look crazy looking at first and then you're like, oh no, it's just, it's just a box with numbers in it. Cool. You know, I don't know. All right. So now we have, Zero, two point six, and then this works out to be one point six five. So this is exciting because, like, already we have I two, right? This is I two, and then I three, and now we're just getting I one. And look how easy it is, since this is one one negative one, and these are zero one zero 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 one. It makes it makes your life so easy, right? Like. The first two are gross, and this is just going to be a walk in the park for you. All right, so oops. the first row minus the second row so you're going to have
zero minus 2.66 is just be negative 2.66. And then and the last thing you have to do is get rid of the negative one. So we can just do E1 plus E3 or bar three. And what you end up with is Sorry, it's the my matrices are getting progressively uglier as I become more and more ambivalent to the aesthetics of this video. Sorry. Okay. And you know, who knows? Maybe there is like a series of steps that it will solve this in fewer steps you know like maybe you know there's a different order of things that'll you can do it in fewer than this many matrices but this is just what looked obvious to me so yeah all right so now you're done right we have one zero 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 one zero 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 one and so that means one i one equals negative one point zero one right so i one equals negative point zero and then I two two point six six and I three is one point six five. Oh, I should probably put units. Okay, so yeah, that's how you solve for the current using matrices.